One of the great sayings, one of the great truisms is, Father Time is undefeated. I woke up this morning feeling old. I feel it in my bones, as Bilbo Baggins once said. I went back and looked at one of the early videos from my channel, and gods, I was younger then. <laughs> I just feel ancient today. Uh, it's, it's funny to see how much I've kind of aged in the last sort of four or five years since this channel's begun. A lot more grey in the beard, and um, <laughs> and just fogginess. I think that's kids. I really do. Um, hey, everybody! <laughs> I'm Oliver Joyce, and welcome to another episode of uh, <laughs> um, Swords and Sandals and Mortals Development. So, I had planned to talk about dual wielding this week, as we have the most important thing of all to make you feel young: coffee. Um, I wanted to talk about dual wielding again this week and actually show you off some gameplay footage, but I haven't done the animations yet. Uh, I'll do them today. There'll be a video next week. So I was racking my brains to think, what can I show you? And well, this week hasn't been a very exciting week in Sword and Sandals and Mortals development. I got to be honest with you, but I still want to show you a little bit. So we're going to talk about stats. Yay, numbers, numbers, because at the heart of every role playing game, and numbers and you got to find a way to display them in meaningful you know in, in a way that's meaningful to the player so that is a a long and tedious process that is uh you know unfortunately a big part of every role-playing game so we're gonna jump in i'll show you some footage and then uh i'll probably go back um have a quick 15 minute nap while the uh, family's out <laughs> and then get on with some uh, game dev all right let's jump into it here we are once again at the heart of the game, the Battle Caravan. Now, if you recall last week, I was actually working on um, improving the shop system a little bit. And I want to show you just uh, where I got to with that. So we'll jump to the armorer. So armorer has your skills there. You can buy an item. Now you can see there's your sort of um, encumbrance bird and stuff up there, which we talked about last week. You know, just basically saying you know, how much stuff can you carry? The moment we're carrying a full load of stuff, so uh, it's gonna slow us down on the battlefield. But, you know, if I was to go sell my items and um, sell a shield, burden goes down a bit. Um, sell my pants. <laughs> now I have no pants, but yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I'm not sure if this was in the last video, but check this out. So if I, um, yeah, we now have full pictures of each item you can see your armor there the one you want to buy the one you've got equipped it show you these little red arrows that tell you is this better is this worse you can close those of course if you want a full image of the thingy um the thingy a very technical term and you know helmets and that kind of thing it shows you the weight and um you know if i bought this i'd be over use so that's great. I'm pretty happy with where the shop is at right now. You can, of course, look at things um, in this other view. These red images are items yet to get artwork for. So as you can see, I still need a lot of art before the game is released. Okay, so let's check this out, though. Character screen shows a picture of your guy. Notice here, I don't know if I've shown you this in the past, but the cape flutters in the wind. It's a little got a little shader on it. Uh, I still need to fix it up just a little bit because you can see the um, top of the cape is coming out a little bit there, but it's got a nice little um, sort of wind shader on it, which is just thought so it's quite nice. Okay, other thing I did. See here, the little star here, favorite. Now, when you click on an item, you can set as favorite, melee favorite. Favorite comes up here. You can set this to favorite if I want. What does that mean? This is a subtle thing, and this is something that you know a lot of players probably won't even realize, and you know may have never make use of. But if you are in battle, and let's equip this in the old hand, okay, cool, dual wielding is working for that and everything. Or I could equip the hook sword, hook sword in the other hand. Uh, yeah, someone pointed out last week that a hook sword actually is a one-handed weapon, not a two-handed weapon. So I've fixed that up. Okay, uh, but let's unequip that. Back to this. Favorite morning star, favorite short bow, but I've got the spather equipped. Meaning, if I go into battle and I um, throw my weapon, 
when I get my other weapon back, it'll use my favorite weapon. So I could go into battle with a Spatha, and unless I set that, if I set that to favorite, then I switch weapon to my bow, which is my favorite ranged weapon. Then I switch weapon back, it'll switch to my favorite weapon. Does that make sense? So I could set Morningstar to be my favorite. So we go into battle with a Spatha, and then switch to my bow, and then switch back to my favorite, and then all of a sudden I'll have my Morningstar. So it allows you to sneakily kind of use weapons in battle. Like you could actually have two different melee weapons if you wanted to start off with this. And then the reason I did that is because when you switch to ranged, what if you have like 10 different bows? How's the computer going to know? How's the AI going to know um, which one you're talking about? So I've only got one bow to show you there. But if I had two bows, I could go, right, I want to set this other bow to be my favorite. So when I switch to the ranged weapon, it'll switch to that favorite bow. And then when I switch back to the melee weapon, it'll switch to whatever it says favorite there. Subtle thing, but as you play the game more, that'll become more useful. Uh, one other thing which we'll talk about next week especially is dual wielding once you're doing dual wielding you can't switch to a ranged weapon um if you've got two weapons in your hands you're not putting them down to get your bow out uh that is going to be just one of the um penalties of dual wielding one of the sort of limits because it's very powerful you know you have two weapons doing full damage um you have to offset that somehow so i've been thinking about that and having talk i talked to a bit of the guys some of the guys from the Discord channel, uh, General Nitschke and a few others, and they suggested, particularly he did, suggested some cool ideas for dual wielding, which I'm putting in next week. Dual wielding's actually taken a lot longer than I thought it would. You know what I mean? Okay, so the heart of the video, as I've said before, um, stats. Let's check it out. All right, again, a work in progress. But have a look at this page here. These are all the stats we have for our character at the moment and this page will grow as i find more stats to uh, put in there more this is you know where you get your strategies from when you want to find out you know how much damage does my character really do how far does he move and that kind of thing here are our primary stats over here uh, your base stat is just how many points you've put into that and your total is that as well plus any bonuses you might have from having you know, shield of the ball, which is plus two to strength or whatever it is, or a ring of might, which might give you um, plus five to vitality, that kind of thing. So you'll have, you know, one base with five, whatever it is. Okay, secondary stats here. And I'm going to have under here, I'm going to have either a rollover or a little space under here that actually tell you what those things do, because it's not really clear in the game. So we're going to find out, it'll probably be some kind of scroll bar like this. I'll put here to go, all right, Strength does this, agility does this. Because rollovers, I've been avoiding them. And the reason is, uh, this is a PC game, you know, PC and Mac and that kind of thing. But as we all know with Swords and Sandals, there's also going to be a mobile port. And in mobiles, you know, you don't really have rollover states. It doesn't work so well. So you want to try and avoid them if possible. So I'd rather have all that information displayed as, as it is. So probably underneath the strength will have like, you know, strength affects your melee damage and how far you can push enemies, that kind of thing. And there'll be more information on those as I break them down. Secondary stats panel, your equipped weapons, essentially. Shows you your melee weapons, Spatha doing 42 damage, Hook Sword doing 66 damage, total melee damage 108, which is you know great. I mean, all those numbers are going to be altered for the final version. Also shows you your range damage with your short bow. But if I went back to my inventory and um, unequip the spatha. Now, oh, let's have a look. Hang on. Okay. What happened there? Shock and horror, the game crashed. What happened there was the game crashed because it was missing uh, some data about the item. So uh, we'll jump back to that video in a second. But... What about uh, a good time to talk about the Patreon? Hey, Armorer, if you would like to be a Patreon, that would make my day. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Patreon, uh, it's, you know, these patrons have been a, a great supporter of the channel and, and, and since, since I brought the Patreon back. Uh, we have Jandaku Chanahi, Nua Gurajan, Nico, Xup Omega, Ilya Gurovich, Jeffro of Hex3D, Davi, Pialo 34, Michael Loder, Yunus Yalo, Hopeless, Chris Lopez, and Daniel Funches. Uh, we lost a couple of patrons in the last few weeks, I'm not going to lie. Salute you anyway. And uh, I thank those 
who are still around uh, helping the cause. Heroes all. All right, we're back with a new character called Blaze, who uh, is also the default um, sort of pale skin, blonde hair guy. I don't know why it defaults to that. That wasn't intentional, I assure you. Um, okay, yeah, so what I was trying to do before was unequip the second weapon, and when you do, you don't see it there anymore, so it just shows you your spatha. There'll be more information on the uh, weapons and, you know, showing you, like, oh, swords are good against, um, you know, flesh or clubs are good against bashing armor or axes have extra critical hit damage information that would go there too and down below equipped armor the value of it and the weight and it shows you that there and if you have any sort of magical armor and so on same with weapons you'll see different colors so if you have like a rare new buckler it might be green or if you have you know um uh, a jantian helmet of the bard or whatever it is it might be purple but you that kind of thing you know the classic diablo color inventory system I'm really needing this coffee today as you can see i'm kind of battling a bit in this video i don't know why i've got to do a video every week i feel like i i, I owe it to you guys and um sometimes i just I don't have the good energy miscellaneous stats okay this is kind of where the meat of everything is it tells you blaze level one human warrior his battle stats, so you know, here it has some health he has, how much he gains per turn um, when resting. I should actually change that to when resting, health regained when rest. Uh, how much essence, um, how much movement per turn, parry chance, block chance. Actually, that essence thing's wrong. That's actually showing his health next to his essence. I've got to fix that one up. Uh, yeah, you know, we're in a very much a, a build stage. There's still, you know what, though? Although you, every now and again you do see a crash or a bug, this game is, touch wood, feeling a lot more bug-free than previous Sword and Sandals. And that's in large part thanks to the Godot engine, which is, uh, uh, you know, I just think more robust and better at handling things. Push power, shield block chance. What's the difference between parry chance and shield block chance? Well, parry is, you know, parrying with a weapon. So you've always got a chance to defend something, right? But if you have a shield you also have an extra chance to defend with your shield. And um, when you have a shield, I'm still working this out, that uh, when you have a shield, you either have a 25% chance to block all damage completely, or if you don't block it, all damage goes to your shield <coughs> until the shield breaks. So that can be like, I want shields to be quite kind of useful. So, um, you know, you basically have to get past the guy's shield before you can start doing damage to their helmet or their head and everything. Kind of I'll see if that works, if that's a, a good system or not. Um, and of course, resistances. Physical, fire, frost, lightning, poison, sonic, being guitars and stuff like that. And your appearance, his alignment, uh, his weight, height, species, uh, human from Fedor. One of the oldest cities in Brandor, the shining kingdom of Fator, is set amongst rolling fields and green forests. It is synonymous with visions of splendor, prosperity, and chivalry, a shining beacon of hope against the dark powers of the world. Now, check out the weight and height. It's in metric. Here's one other fun thing I did this week. Use metric system. Off. So for our American friends, you can go... Um, Six foot four, 198 pounds. Woohoo! So that makes sense to you. Okay, and also shows you like his movement in feet. Cool, huh? <laughs> These are the things I've been working on this week instead of doing the dual wielding. Uh, I did touch upon this panel. You've seen this before. This is the stats panel with some kind of cool, awesome artwork from Bokimi. He's going to be doing some um, excellent artwork for the locations as well. When you arrive at a new town, it'll show you like the sort of sketch of the town, because uh, I really love that style of art. I think it really suits the game well. And of course, it shows you your talents, but um, that you won't be able to, that button will be hidden. There's no description for that. Still a work in progress, as are many things in our game. There we have it. If you're new to the channel and haven't seen the Sword and Sounds Immortals trailer, here it is. And of course, you can wishlist on Steam uh, at the link below. I really appreciate your wishlist. They're growing and they're, they're going to be the thing that makes this game or breaks this game. Uh, 
if we get enough wish lists, this game will uh, enter the next stratosphere of Steam promotion and really put us, you know, on the charts with the big indie games. And that's where I need to be. Otherwise, it's, you know, potentially the, the sort of the adieu to Swords and Sandals for a while because I'm putting everything into this. If this doesn't do well, you know, uh, I probably need to take a break from it and, and do something else. But hopefully that doesn't come to pass. Thank you, my friends. Thanks for being here on the channel. Um, if you're new to the channel uh, and just stumbled across it somehow, like and subscribe, you know, or not. But I appreciate you guys being here. I love all the comments and thanks for being part of Swords and Sandals. And until next week, I hope you're feeling less tired than me and I envy you and your beautiful youth. <laughs> Bye for now.